A haunted hospital building, a spiritual possession of a loved one, and screaming coming from inside of a boarded up room in a dark basement. These are just some of the horrors that await in Sunod. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine. My name is Vic Shai, and this is The Scare Score, where I break down horror movies and rate them on how scary I think they are. In this episode, I'll be going over the 2019 Filipino horror film, Sunod. The film tells the story of a mother struggling to pay her daughter's medical bills. She takes a job as a call taker in an old hospital building that conveniently happens to be haunted for the purposes of our horror movie plot. I'll be going over the events that take place throughout the film while our scare score goes up or down based on how effective the scares are or attempt to be. Haunted hospitals are an overly done cliche of the horror movie genre, however this film manages to do things a little differently. But how scary is it? Sit back and relax and join me as we Explore Sunod and tally up the scare score. Our movie begins with a somber nightmare sequence as a woman wearing all black stands in the rain. She is standing over the grave of a young girl dressed in white. Two great value dementors start filling the grave as the young girl suddenly opens her eyes. The woman tries her best to stop them from burying the girl alive, but they've got bills to pay. Our main character, Olivia, wakes up from the nightmare in the hospital. Her teenage daughter, Anel, has been hospitalized with heart problems. The doctor says that she has to stay for an extra few weeks, which Olivia can't currently afford. She looks around the hospital waiting room which is more depressing than my last couple of community posts. She immediately goes on the hunt for a job which starts off with her resume getting soaking wet. She attends a job fair meant only for college students and verbally threatens her way into getting a job. It also helped that she was the best English speaker at the job fair. The film does a good job in showing the relationship between Olivia and Anel. Olivia arrives to her workplace at a call center located inside of an old hospital building. The cinematography throughout the film is absolutely stunning, which isn't often the case in horror films. Little fact about me, a few years back I worked the night shift as a 911 call taker. Our call center was located on the bottom floor of a super old building that used to be a jail. Needless to say, it was absolutely creepy. The building is named Liboro House and houses the call center for a company called LGO. Olivia gets into the elevator and tries going to the fourth floor. The elevator stops on the third floor, however, which is currently currently being renovated. A shadow can be seen moving in the distance before the elevator closes. Nothing too crazy here, but this scare utilizes the setting and atmosphere very well. She arrives on the call floor and every single person oddly turns around and looks at her. Not in a creepy way, but in a sort of nosy, rude way. She attends a new hire presentation being led by a manager named Lance. We're all family here. We're a family now. He explains the history of Liboro House and says that it was originally a settlement for World War II survivors. It was then turned into a hospital in the 70s and is now being renovated for LGO. She makes friends with a fellow trainee named Mimi, who is a self-proclaimed professional trainee. Mimi says that she only attends training for the pay and never stays with a single company. Miss Karen, daughter of the owner of LGO, puts her on blast in front of everyone and says that she'll be fired if she doesn't learn the new system. Her first day of work has her completely exhausted and we get a continuation of the nightmarish sequence of Anel getting buried. Olivia and Mimi become really good friends. She helps train Olivia, which gets Miss Karen off her back. She learns about Anel's condition and decides to stay at LGO because she likes Olivia. While taking a call from a customer, Olivia hears the voice of a girl saying hello several times. This annoys the customer who hangs up the phone before the electricity suddenly goes out. Lance pulls her aside and says that he heard about her daughter's condition. He also put in a good word for her with Miss Karen to speed up her employment process. As simple as that scare was, it caught me off guard because it reminded me that I was still in fact watching a horror film. We get a nice moment between Olivia and Anel who sings a pretty good song for her exhausted mother. It's a really sweet and touching moment that does a great job in showing the beauty of their relationship. Actress Crystal Brimner who portrays Anel has a really amazing voice.
The next day, Olivia gets pulled aside by Lance once again. He says that Miss Karen knows she pretended to be Mimi's supervisor on a previous call, which is against company policy. However, she is impressed with how the situation was handled and Olivia becomes a permanent employee for the company. Lance takes this opportunity to shoot a shot and asks her out for drinks. It goes pretty similar to every time I ask a woman out. Olivia clearly isn't interested as her main priority is her daughter. As she leaves the bathroom, the shadow of a little girl can be seen standing in the hallway. She encounters the little girl whose name is Nerissa. Olivia offers to help Nerissa look for her parents and holds out her hand. The girl looks hesitant at first but then touches her hand and the lights go out. Nerissa follows Olivia in the dark building and there is definitely something off about her. The girl seems like she hasn't been outside in a while and at this point things became pretty obvious, but not for Olivia. A bus full of people arrives and just like my dad did 24 years ago, Nerissa disappears into the crowd. Olivia returns to the hospital and watches over for her sleeping daughter who now appears sicklier. Anel is now possessed by Nerissa's spirit and the way this scene unfolds is absolutely chilling. The scene originally appeared to show them sleeping for a little too long, so it really caught me off guard when Anel's body suddenly rose up that way. The next day, something really freaky happens on one of her calls. She hears the distorted sound of a man seemingly struggling. <laughs> The way the scares are subtly incorporated into her job as a call taker is pretty clever and well done. She receives a call from her daughter's doctor and tries heading to the hospital. She gets into the elevator and the lights start to flicker before stopping in the basement. She gets out of the elevator to look for a way out. The voice of a girl calls out for help which seems to be coming from behind a sealed door. The doorknob starts to rattle and a man starts yelling die from the other side. She rushes back into the elevator which conveniently happens to be working again right on cue. This is a good scare scene that really pushes the film in the horror direction it needs to be. She returns to the hospital and is told that Anel's condition has miraculously gotten better. The doctor says that she will be able to go home in a few days. This is of course because she is now possessed by Nerissa. While preparing to go home, Anel starts giggling while looking at herself in the bathroom mirror. A nurse comes in and hands a Olivia the scariest thing in the movie so far, the hospital bill. The scare scene was absolutely brilliant. There are two significant things happening at the same time. Olivia is receiving the massive hospital bill for her daughter's condition. In the background, we get the visual representation that Anel is being possessed by an evil entity. Very chilling stuff. Olivia goes to her company HR to get an advance to pay for the bill but unfortunately gets denied. Frustrated and exhausted, she lays her head down in the rest area and falls asleep. We once again see the nightmare sequence of Anel being buried alive and Olivia suddenly finds herself in the hospital basement. She is attached to a red string of yarn that gets pulled from inside of a dark room. She wakes up from the nightmare to Lance creepily sitting on the edge of the bed. He personally hands her a large check to cover the hospital bills. However, this isn't just out of the kindness of his heart and is a blatant example of quid pro quo. He forces himself onto her but she manages to fight him off and leaves the room. Olivia decides to keep the check, however, and doesn't report Lance for the assault. She returns home with the possessed Anel who clearly isn't familiar with the setting, let alone her name. That night, Olivia's nightmares become increasingly disturbing. The real Anel appears and seems to be reacting to her possession by Nerissa. She appears terrified and says she is hearing voices in her head. Nerissa takes back control of the body and starts making a croaking sound that gave me terrifying flashbacks from the Juan days. She stops croaking and suddenly screams before running back to her room. Anel is back in bed covered underneath her blanket. Olivia pulls the blanket off and wakes up Anel who doesn't seem to remember what just happened. This was a really intense scare scene that came out of nowhere. The croaking is what really got me and you all know why that is. The next day, Lance acts like nothing happened between him and Olivia. He even lets everyone know that her daughter is finally home from the hospital which is pretty psychopathic. Olivia tells Mimi what Lance did to her and their conversation is overheard by possessed Anel. Lance goes into work and the elevator takes him to the basement instead of the fourth floor. Instead of just waiting for the elevator to come back up, he tries finding a way out of the basement. He hears a girl giggling behind the sealed door and the light suddenly comes on as he tries walking away. 
The light freakily turns on and off until he is jumped by possessed Anel prison style. She strikes him in the back of the head and chokes him to death. This is a very satisfying death as Lance is a despicable character. However, neither Nerissa nor Anel are professional killers and his body is soon discovered. As terrible a character as he was, this shot of Lance being sealed into the body bag is pretty haunting. LGO is temporarily shut down by Karen's father while the investigation into Lance's murder is going on. Back at home, Olivia sees possessed Anel watching the news of Lance's death and cracking a devious smile while choking her teddy bear. Olivia quickly starts putting things together and looks up information on the history of Liboto House. She sees an old picture of the hospital staff with Nerissa in it. She watches the most generic video on an exorcism possible and realizes that Anel may be possessed by Nerissa's spirit. She decides to test her daughter by asking her to play the song she wrote in the hospital. She can't play the song and responds when she is called Nerissa. Nerissa realizes that the jig is up and says that Olivia reminds her of her mother. Nerissa was trying to communicate with Olivia through the phone calls and says that possessing Anel was the only way to speak with her. Her mother's name is Perla and she needs Olivia's help to see her again. Nerissa says she will leave them alone once she gets to see her mother. Nerissa admits to having killed Lance because he hurt Olivia. The crazy comes out of her and she starts yelling that Lance was a bad person just like everyone else in the hospital. Calling out to Anel seems to work and she temporarily regains control of her body. Olivia tells Mimi about the situation and she helps them look for Nerissa's mother. Nerissa is able to track her mother down by turning into the world's creepiest and most advanced GPS unit. If only I could do that to find my father. Nerissa's mother is initially confused but becomes overjoyed once Nerissa whispers something in her ear. We learn that Perla was a custodian at the Liboro house when it was a hospital. She was told that Nerissa fell ill due to tuberculosis and passed away. She was then kicked out of the hospital with no other explanation. Nerissa tells her mother that she was lied to and that she was actually killed by the hospital staff. Olivia believes that if they retrieve Nerissa's remains, she can finally be at peace. Karen goes to visit her father, who reveals that Lance's murder was captured on security cameras. More importantly, they are aware that Nerissa possessed Anel's body during the crime. Her father's assistant hands her a convenient, here's everything you need to know file, and we learn what truly happened with Nerissa and her mother in an exposition dump. He says that Perla and Nerissa lived in the sealed room inside of the hospital basement. Perla was sweet, but there was something strange about Nerissa. In in fact, there was something strange about the entire building, who many people believe to be cursed as people kept disappearing. Mr. Liboro reveals that Nerissa was evil and killed Karen's mother by slicing her throat with a knife. Mr. Liboro then killed Nerissa by choking her to death. The sound of Mr. Liboro yelling die is what Olivia heard on the prior phone call and when she went into the basement. He burned the room with Nerissa in it and sealed it off. However, he regrets not having burned down the entire building. Karen reviews the security cameras and sees Olivia, Mimi, Anel, and Perla sneaking into the building. Olivia tries opening the sealed door and Nerissa hands her a metal pipe, most likely the one she used to murder Lance with. Metal pipes serve multiple purposes. They enter the room but don't see Nerissa's body anywhere. Things take a wild turn as Perla murders Mimi by stabbing her multiple times with a knife, Michael Myers style. Possessed Anel pushes Olivia into Perla who knocks her out cold. She wakes up bound to the stone slab tied by Possessed Anel. She says that now, they can finally complete what was never finished. They appear to be doing some kind of ritual similar to the one that was done to Karen's mother before her death. However, that one was never completed because Mr. Liboto killed Nerissa. It's unsure what this ritual actually does, but I believe it's meant to give Perla and Nerissa eternal life. They have possibly lived in the building and performed this ritual for ages. This is why people kept mysteriously leaving and disappearing from Liboto House. Perla busts out the red yarn, ties it to a sharp wooden object, and stabs it into her stomach. Olivia loses consciousness and wakes up in rock bottom, completely <laughs> wrapped in yarn like she's <laughs> stuck in a <laughs> spider web. Perla appears right behind her in her true demon form. She starts consuming Olivia, but Karen arrives in the real world and knocks her out. Olivia gets free and she tries calling out to Anel, but Nerissa takes off running out of the room. Karen tells Olivia to go and she tries fighting off Perla on her own. She chases possessed Anel into the third floor being renovated right into a predictable jump scare. Possessed Anel jumps Olivia and puts the beat down on her like Caesar did to Koba in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Anel tries fighting with Nerissa from the inside and smashes her head into a mirror.
Nerissa takes a glass shard and holds it to her own neck. Anel tries her best to take control, but Nerissa slices her forehead with the glass. Anel pleads with her mother to take her life, saying that she will always be with her. Olivia chokes the life out of her daughter as we see the nightmare sequence with Olivia now holding the shovel, burying Anel. With the life seemingly gone from her body, Olivia starts performing CPR and pleads with her daughter to wake up. Anel comes back to life with Nerissa no longer possessing her. Karen then comes rushing into the room and calls an ambulance. After the incident, Anel is back in the hospital recovering from her injuries, but her heart condition has come back. Karen tells her that Anel is going to be fine and that she is going to take care of everything. She says that the police are waiting downstairs and leads her to the elevator. As they get into the elevator, a lady bumps into Karen. Olivia looks back and sees a red ball of yarn on the ground that Karen dropped, showing that Perla has taken over over Karen's body. Another clue hinting at this was when Karen rushed into the room in the previous scene, her stomach was bleeding as Perla stabbed her just like she did Olivia. As the elevator's door shut, Olivia realizes that Perla is standing behind her. In the film's final scene, possessed Karen slowly comes into view and tells Olivia not to be afraid as the movie ends. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Sunod. My friends, this was a really interesting horror film with a deeply emotional plot. I became attached to the characters from the beginning, which made everything that happened to them so much more interesting. The film definitely focused more on its plot, while horror elements were sprinkled throughout. However, the moments of horror that the film did have were very effective, earning Sunod a fair scare score of 50%. The scariest scene in the film was when Anel woke up Olivia in the middle of the night. Night. Her crying for help from within, followed by the terrifying croak, made for a great scare. But, as always, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you all for tuning in, and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.